Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus, we thank you because our help is in the name of the Lord. Thank you because we will never be stranded. Thank you for the forgiveness of sin and for the gift of righteousness. Thank you for answered prayers. Thank you for the gift of the Holy Spirit. Thank you for the power of the blood. Thank you for the blood of Jesus Christ that breaks into pieces every resistance of hell. Thank you for supernatural victory. For the Bible says this is a victory that overcomes the world even our faith. We give you the praise and we give you the glory this morning. As we look into your word, we ask that insight, illumination, revelation, encouragement, transformation will happen today that today someone will hear the voice of God direction will come, building will come we give you the praise and the glory in Jesus mighty name we pray amen. that amen can be louder amen. praise God so this morning we're going to talk about resolving communication problems in marriages and relationships resolving communication problems in marriages and relationships glory to God Hallelujah. There are five things that negatively impact a marriage if it's not well handled. There are five things that negatively impact a marriage if it's not well handled. Number one will be money. You will know that one of the top two reasons why couples get divorced is because of finances. The second one will be sex. The second one will be sex. The third one will be in-laws. The fourth one will be parenting. Some people are okay until the kids get on board. Then the marriage begins to struggle. And the fifth thing, the fifth area where couples struggle is communication. It's communication. It's communication. And why is communication important? Number one, number one, there are no marriage problems. There are communication problems. Why? Whatever you can talk about with your spouse will be eventually solved. So someone says we have financial problems. The reason why you have a financial problem is because you're not talking. There are no financial problems. They are just what? Communication problems. Someone says, well, you know, we have problem about the kids. I want the kids to do A and he wants the kids to do B. There are no parenting problems. They are what? communication problems. They're just communication problems. You know, these are communication problems right there. So they are communication problems. They are communication problems. So there are no, you know, there are no real problems. They're communication problems. And let me say this as we start here. Like we're going to read the scripture. Proverbs chapter 15 from verse 1 to verse 2. Let's lay a foundation for this. And some of you are experts in this. You know it now to talk. Some of us are learning through this. And I'm also learning through this. And I hope you can learn. The Bible says this. A soft answer turneth away wrath. But grievous words stir up what? Give your what? Grievous words stir up anger. Verse 2. It says the tongue of the wise useth knowledge aright. But the mouth of the fools poureth out foolishness. Let's read from the, let's read from the NLT. Let's read from the NLT. Let's read from the NLT. The Bible says this, A gentle answer deflects anger, but harsh words make temper flare. Verse 2, it says, The tongue of the wife makes what? Knowledge appealing, but the mouth of a foolish bleaches out what? Foolishness. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Why is communication important in relationships and marriages? Number one, because assumption is a major cause of all marital conflicts. Assumption is a major cause of more marriage to complete. If you have been dating for a while, if you are married for a while, you know that assumption is a is you know is actually the root of a lot of issues. I watched a video recently, and there was a mother. This mother had a child very early. She must have had that child when she was about 15 years old. So the child is about 25 right now, and the woman is 40 years old, you know, and she's very in shape. She still looks like a very young woman. So she was walking with her son with her son in the park in the US and all of a sudden out of nowhere the boy's girlfriend bumped into it and looked at the son and said oh my god so this is what you do when I'm not around you go ahead hanging out with other women in the park oh my god now I've cut you you know and what as he was saying that the guy looked at her and said babe stop this is my mom but she had ranted before she heard that and all of a sudden she couldn't take back her word back she went um Hello, hello, ma'am. But she had said something. But the key thing is that assumption, assumption, assumption are the major causes of conflict. Assumptions are the major causes of conflict. So instead of you to assume, why not ask? Instead of him to assume, why not what? Why not ask? So all of you that are married, why not ask? Why not ask? Why not ask? 
I know people, you know, I, I know people that you feel as if something is going wrong. If you feel as if something is going wrong, why not just ask that what is going on? And all of you that are single, all of you that are single, this is for you. Dating time is investigating time. Investigate before you invest. Dating time is questioning time. You need to ask the person that is asking you some good question. Excuse me, is this your real name? Uh, do you have another name before? Is this your son name? Is this your car or your father's car? Do you have a job or you really don't work there? Do you have debt or you have money? Praise God. Are you straight or you are gay? Are you bisexual or you are gay? You need to ask very, very straight questions. Do you intend to have children or you don't intend to have children? Do you think that, you, do you think that we should share bills or we should not share bills? Ask very straight questions. When you go to church or you will not go to church? Ask very straight questions. Glory to God. Most problems that married people had, and you know, it happens to Christians a lot because Christians feel as if I prayed about that. So there's no need to ask questions. You need to ask questions to confirm if what you prayed about is real. Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. So assumptions are the major cause of conflict. And you know what assumptions do? Assumptions complicate issues. Assumptions complicate issues. Men, don't leave your wife to assume. You take a girl to a restaurant. He say, what can I order? You say, order anything. Now when it's time to pay the bill, you start grumbling. You are the one that say, order anything. You could have just said that up front. Hey, we're going here. My budget is 150K. Let's walk within the budget. And anybody that cannot understand your financial state is not someone you should be planning to spend your future with. Anybody that does not understand your financial state is not someone you should be planning to what? To spend your future with. Communication is very powerful because communication helps you not know, to assume. Ask question. What is your blood genotype? You need to ask question. Do you have HIV? Have you done an HIV test before? Or just ask. Have you done an HIV test before? Stop assuming. The car you drive, is it your car or your brother's car? Is this your son's name or you change your name? Is it your company or your is it family company? Glory to God. A lady walked up to, a, a lady was telling me this on the phone and she was broken. It also was broken because a lady walked to her house, home, knocked the door and said, sorry ma'am to break this to you. This girl is your husband's daughter. I know they've not told you I'm tired of hiding. I just want you to know that this is your husband's daughter. And the man said, but you never asked me if I had a child. Glory to God. Why is communication important? Number one, number one, number one, the lack of communication, the lack of communication will make support and understanding difficult. Many people always say that my partner is not supporting me. But the truth is that you have not communicated where you need support. I know a man that lost his job and hid it for his wife for several months. And his wife kept on, you know, putting up the financial bills on him. Until one day, he just exploded and said, do you want to kill me? The wife said, what do you mean? He said, I've lost my job for the past three months. He says, and you keep putting up this bill. But how will I know you've lost your job when you have not told me? It's difficult for me to understand if you're not talking. Man, it's difficult for me to understand if you're not talking. So without communication, there cannot be support. Without communication, without communication, there cannot be support. Without communication, there cannot be understanding. And that's why when you watch all these war movie, mo movies, rather, when you watch all these war, war movies, was the end, one of the key strategy of the opposing, um, um, what do you call it, um, military is that they want to cut off communication. You know why? They know if they can cut off communication, like they can crumble the military. 
And Satan wants to cut off the communication lines of marriages because he knows if he can cut it off, he can what? He can crumble marriages. Someone say hallelujah. Someone say hallelujah. Lack of communication would decrease trust and increase suspicion. Lack of communication, what? It will reduce trust and what? Increase sus suspicion. Listen to me. Every time you leave a gap, it, people don't fill it with good things. They fill it with nasty stories. So, if you start coming home late, you start coming home 10, 11, 12, 1, and you don't call your wife and say, honey, the reason I'm coming up late is that I'm the one in charge of the bank integration thing that is going on. So myself and my team have to come up late. Your wife will start coming up with stories that maybe it's Shenenkwa, maybe it's Chantel, maybe it's Shenonto. You know, all the stories will start coming up, will be coming up like that. And the reason why is that she needs to come up with a story. So communication, the lack of communication reduces what? Trust and increases what? Suspicion. If you already marry someone that is a bit suspicious, what do you do? From time to time, you know, you say, honey, I, I know you're wondering where I am. Let's do a video. Let, just for your mind to be at peace. Hallelujah. Communication. Glory to God. I said glory to God. I said glory to God. A lack of communication causes emotional distancing and isolation. And let me say this. The worst thing that one of the worst things that can happen to someone is to be married and lonely in their marriage. And some of the loneliest people in the world are people that are married and not single. If they are single, they will have looked for other relationships and become open to them. But there are people that are in their marriage, but it's as if they are not married, and they're extremely lonely in the marriage. And the reason why people are lonely in their marriage is this. There is no basis for communication. How do you know there's no communication? Sometimes when I sit down with couples to talk about their marriage, when the wife opens, ah, when the wife opens the tab, she starts talking. She, for two hours, she's just going, pra pa pa ta Prata, 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 One hour has gone, she's talking, rakata, papa, rata, rata. Two hours has gone, she's talking. You say, excuse me, I say, I'm not done, sir. When you hear something like that from a woman, that's a woman that has not spoken in a long time. So she has found a place to talk so she cannot be kept back. Without conversation, they can't be, see, you know, without communication, there can't be intimacy. Without communication, there, there can't be that feeling that you can support me. So if communication is this important, how come we don't talk? We don't talk because we don't talk because we are very different in how we talk. We're very different. We're very different. I wanted to use this, but maybe I'll use it in the next service. You know, yeah, I, I don't need it for now because of time. We're very, you know, what do you call it? Different in the way we talk. When men talk, they talk logically. Women are logical, but most times women are emotional when they talk. So one of the things we have to do, you know what I'm saying this to you? Because even though you're born again, you have to be trained to talk in marriage. You have to, this marriage dinner, it takes training. Even me, I'm going to training. And the reason why is that most of, most of us grew from dysfunctional homes. We came from fathers we don't want to be like. Not everybody. We came from mothers we don't want to be like. So we are hoping that, but the thing is that even though we don't want to be like them, we end up becoming like them because that's what we're exposed to. So for us to become something else, we have to be exposed to what? Something else. Some of you grew up from the home where the only thing your father does is to decree like head of state. And now that you're married, you know, you know the thing, eh? You have men that want 21st century girls that can go, oh yeah, I want this, I want that. This is what they want to. But the way they were raised was they were raised as an emperor. So they will not date that girl. And next thing, hey, you cannot walk. Uh, uh, the girl say, what do you mean? He said, what do you mean? I, I, don't, I don't get that. When I talk, you don't talk back. You say, yes. See, some things are not balanced. 
If you want old school wife, look, if you want old school marriage, look for old school wife. And the girls are saying, yes, I want a 21st century husband. In 21st century, they share bills. Can you share bills? He said, like, I don't know, I don't want that one. You know the thing, eh? Sometimes what you want, you need to be careful of it. Glory to God. I said, glory to God. So let me give you some steps that will say, how do we communicate in marriage? These are some steps that will help us communicate what in marriage. The first one is this. And the first one is for ma the first one, how to communicate in marriage. Number one, make the move. Matthew chapter 5 verse 9. The Bible says, blessed are the peacemaker, for they shall be called what? The children of God. Make the move. Be the first person to initiate talking in your relationship. Be the first person to initiate talking in your relationship. Your maturity shows when you take responsibility for communication. The baby will not talk. You mature up and talk. The baby will not talk. So when something goes on relationship, I, sometimes it's the man that is sulking. It's Ovia that is going, mm, 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 mm. no, just stand up and stand up to it. Glory to God. I said glory to God. So in your relationship, make the first move. And let me give you something. This has, this has some guidance. Hey, men, when you, want, when, we, when you want women to talk, men, these four things, don't do. These are, don't do when you want women to talk. Number one, when women are talking, don't debate. You know why? Every time women are talking, they are talking for connection, not for correction. So when women are talking, you say, I don't even have anything to wear. You say, hmm, hmm, hmm. You don't. Really, you don't have anything to wear. Here, I don't know. Meanwhile, the wardrobe is full. He said, Charity, you don't have anything. I don't know. I don't know. Meanwhile, last week, you traveled and bought four luggage of clothes. But today, you don't have anything to wear. So when you say, don't have anything to wear, don't say, no, you have something to wear now. Didn't you, didn't you travel last week? I, I, I bought this for you last month. You know, that way, you will just lose the woman. You don't have anything to wear. You say, hmm, I wonder what you wear. Praise God. Why? The reason why is that women talk for connection. So when you talk to your woman, don't debate. The second thing is this. When you talk to a woman, don't disagree. You know why? Women talk their feelings. So when you disagree, it's as if you nullify their feelings. Praise God. So the first one, don't debate. What's the second one? The third one, don't dismiss. And that's where logical men behave. Logical men, when you just, you just shove it aside, and the man says, "Why are you dismissing me?" And the fourth one, when you talk, is this: don't deflect. Don't deflect. Don't deflect or don't defend. That's how you get a woman to talk. Baby, don't care about me. You say me, I care a lot about you. Ah, no. You don't care. Why, why did you say I don't care about you? Uh-huh. She will start talking. So women, when you want to talk to a man, how do you get a man to talk? Number one. Number one is it. And let me say why this is important for women. If a woman feels head, 90% of the problem is solved. Praise God. What did I say? If a woman what? Feels hurt. 90% of all the problem is what? Solved. You never have to... Listen, all you have to just be, oh my God. Hey, hey. Ha, ah, really? Ha. Ah. Hey! Just be actively involved. He said, what should we do? I'm okay, Jerry. She's gone. Praise God. How do you talk, how, how do you talk to him? How do you talk to a man? How do you talk to a man? Number one, number one, don't complain. Women, women, if you want a man to talk, Number one, do what? Don't complain. That's why men fear one phrase. Let me tell you the biggest phrase all men fear, including Obina. One phrase. You know what the phrase is? Eh? We need to talk. Once you say that, a man starts running. <laughs> we need to talk. You're like, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know we need to talk. Something just came up in the office. Pastor Malachi just called me. The reason why is that because the man knows that once you say we need to talk, you want to complain. 
all men globally, white, black, Chinese, Asian, one of the words they fear is what? We need to what? Talk. Don't say we need to talk, just talk. <laughs> praise God. I said praise God. I said praise God. So for, for women, don't complain. Number two, don't criticize. Criticism makes men run. You know, you, you, women talk because women observe details. They are hoping that if I notice a problem, I can tell you, I can get, we can, if they criticize you, get better. Most men, when you criticize them, they just take off. They just take off. So that's the first thing. That's the first thing. So how do you talk? How do you talk in your marriage? How do you talk in your marriage? And when it comes to talking, I need to know that there are three components of talking. Number one, what is said. The words come, see, in every talking, words consist 7% of communication. Tone consists of what? 23% of communication. Guess what 70% is? Body language. That's where men have problems. You see, Pastor, what, ask him what I said. I only asked him, is he okay? And he got angry. But that's not how you ask. Are you okay? <laughs> are you okay? That's a, the, the reason why is that your body language talks 70%. And some of you are experts in rolling eye. And this morning you've rolled the eye here. <laughs> You know, so I, babe, I want to talk to you. Yeah, speak. <laughs> so, some of you, you don't even talk. It's the exclamation. <laughs> <laughs> really? Really? When you now have a very sap sapiosexual partner, once you say something, they repeat after you. You know that method? You don't cook well. Oh, I don't cook well. Oh, I don't cook well. They'll start in pieces after you so that they'll start like you make look stupid. <laughs> Praise God. You, you see, in communication, what is said is as important as the tone you used to say it and the body language you used to what? Say it. You need to ask yourself when I'm talking, am I looking for a fight, looking for resolution? This is how we talk. Are you ready? Okay. I need a couple. Which couple will I pick now? Which couple will I pick? All the couple are just looking away. <laughs> is that your wife? Is that, is that your wife? Yes. Is that, oh, two of you come. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, all of them looked away. May not look away from your blessing, except you. Please, please stand over here and face each other. This is how we talk. When we talk, we, do, we come with knife in our mouth. Take knife. Take, take, yeah, talk. <laughs> Did, exactly. This is how we talk. As you are talking, it's almost as if you want to stab somebody. She, when she sees knife in your mouth, what will she do? She will defend herself now. You now ask yourself why your partner is defending. It's what you are saying that is causing the defense. <laughs> Praise God. Then over time, since she knows you always come with a knife, she'll go and get her own knife. Oh yeah, raise it up. Oh yeah. <laughs> if, you, if you touch me, I touch you. Then if she grows very strong and aggressive, she say you, can, you think you're the only one that has a knife, she'll bring a sledgehammer. <laughs> so when you're talking, most people talking, they're like, cha, cha, cha. Then you tell her, cha, cha. You know, how do you do that? that the things you say. No intelligent people, no intelligent person can cook a meal like this. Ooh. That you didn't talk or you just you stabbed somebody. You said no intelligent person can cook it. Is that, is that conversation? There's knife, that gas. It's let am in your mouth. You've used axe to axe the person. You're looking for fight. Raise the, raise the knife again. This 
how most marriages are. Raise it properly. <laughs> I never say stab your wife. Ah. So question, this is how we're talking. Every time we're talking, this is what's coming. This is what the partner says. The partner sees a knife. They sees a knife. Praise God. Thank you. Let me, let, me, let me ask the person next to you, do you have a knife in your mouth? <laughs> uh-huh. Some people say, yes, I know I have a knife. Some say, I have bad mouth. If you have bad mouth, you have bad marriage. Just know, if you have bad mouth, you will have what? Bad marriage. See what the Bible says. Proverbs chapter 15, NLT. Did you hear what I said? If you have bad mouth, what will you have? Bad marriage. Proverbs chapter 15. Verse 1. See what the Bible says. A gentle answer deflects anger. But harsh words make temper what? Fierce. Sometimes when you hear couples talk, what they see amongst each other, you're like, ah, ah. You are dumb. I'm telling you. You can't even say, you know, you, you, the wife will just look at the husband. So they won't take it locally. Use their, they will use their local language to abuse their husband or abuse their wife. Oponura da rada. Praise God. I said praise God. So are you talking or you're attacking your wife with this? The second thing is this. The second thing is this. Second thing, second, so what's the first step to co communication? Make the right move. And when you're talking, we've given you guidance to talk. The second thing is embrace the willingness to be wrong and to accept that your partner can be right. Embrace what? The willingness to be wrong and your partner can be right. Brother and sister, Charles, come. Embrace the willingness to be wrong. Okay, sit down, sit down. You are not very active for me. Ovia and Patricia, come. I love them. They are always very available for me. Yeah. Embrace the willingness to be wrong. If you are married in this church, your seats are on the left and on the right. Amen. Yeah. Embrace the willingness to be wrong. You'll never know that they're married. You so said they look like friends. Meanwhile, their first child is how old? 19 years old. Yeah, just to let you know. Yeah, their first child is 19 years old. Face each other. Just move backwards. It's okay, move backwards. Yeah. yeah. What's the second point? Embrace what? Okay, what do you see? Just look at the, the phone. What do you see, the phone, yeah? Time. What, just tell me exactly what you see. 10.07. 10 07. Did you see that? No. The, the, is that microphone on? It, it is on, yeah. Let me see. It's on, actually. Okay, it's on. It is. No. Oh, can you help me with this microphone? It's not working. Maybe. No, no. I want us to... We need to talk simultaneously, so... Okay, good. Okay, Patricia, once again, what do you see? Uh, I see the time. What, what exactly? 10.08. What do you see? The back of a phone. What, what exactly do you see? What is this? Four cameras. Four cameras. And what? And uh, three SIM cards. Three SIM cards. Is he telling the truth? Are you seeing what he's seeing? No. Who is lying? Neither of us. Neither of us. We're just saying what we see. You're saying what you see? Yeah. No, but that's not how marriage is. You, you, because in marriage, you don't see what you see. You start saying, are you blind? Yeah. <laughs> you don't say, you are lying. Yeah. Yeah, say, 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 say. You're lying. You're lying. No, I'm not. Are you blind? You are. are you blind? You, you are blind. Can't you I'm see? Blind. Can't you see the camera? Can't you see right the camera? Can, can you see the camera? Are you blind? See the time. No, you're lying. There's no time there. There's no time there's there. There's no cameras. There's no time. 
time. But there's no time there. Oh, it's just long, man. I'm done. I'm, yeah, I'm done. done. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. She's. Praise God. The question is that who is right? Both of them are right. It depends on where you're seeing from. For you to communicate, you must be willing to know that there are other perspectives that are right apart from your own. Praise God. Because he is right based on where he's standing and she is right based on where she's standing. Thank you. Glory to God. So when you have communications, when you're communicating, when you're communicating, when you're communicating, you say, every time you don't have money, every time you don't have money, she, it could be right. He said, no, 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 no. You see now, what is it? No, he's not right. You see me? You are not even willing to entertain the opinion that it could actually be what? Right. Something happens, let me explain. They said, there's nothing to explain here. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. Mm. As I'm writing, anywhere you're getting low mark, just put it there. 5%. So that you can go back and know what to what? Walk on. I, this food tastes somehow. I, how does it taste? I tasted it. It tastes perfect. If you want to complain, complain. I know you have been looking for five since yesterday. If you want to complain, complain. What's wrong with this food right now? This food that I'm, this is not my eating right now. Okay, Uloma, come and taste it. Is it not food perfect? The answer said it's perfect. What would the herself say? <laughs> I said, we'll not say that. We'll not enter your boost fight. And I say, if you want to fight me, fight me. What's wrong with this food right now? If the man said there's someone on the food, okay, interrogate. Okay, what, what do you think is wrong with the food? Is it the salt? Is it the temperature? What is wrong with the food? But the thing is that if you're going to have communicate, is that willingness to embrace that I could be wrong and there could be more rights than my own rights. And you know because in Nigeria we grew up in a military setting, we always hear go, we don't hear come. Praise God. I said praise God. The third thing to help communication is this. Listen to understand. What did I say? Listen to understand, not speak. You cannot hear with an itchy mouth. If you, are, if you are in a hurry to talk, you will not hear what your partner is saying. This is how the Bible says. It's James chapter 1 verse 19, the NLT version, please. James chapter 1 verse 19, the NLT version, please. Hallelujah. Listen to understand. Can we put the scripture up, please? James chapter 1, verse 19. Verse 19 is what I said. Is it understand this, my dear brothers and sisters? Let's read one to go. You must all be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to get angry. Amen. The person that speaks very fast is often a fool in that situation. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I said glory to God. Hallelujah. Be slow to speak. Be quick to listen. The fifth thing is this. The fifth thing is this. Learn your partner's triggers and momo button. And the reason why is that we're giving a lot of general, treat, um, general what do you call it? General um, concept about communication. But there's what that pertains to your partner. For me, especially, I'm a pastor. Sunday morning is very busy for me in terms of like, it's very spiritual. So by Saturday, I don't like things, I don't like like emotional things on my heart. I want to come and preach on Sunday morning. I don't want something to be bothering me. I don't know what is going wrong, that kind of thing. So naturally speaking, you know, the way I operate that, please, whatever happens on Saturday, just tell me on Sunday after church. That's the kind of thing. Even if you're trying to talk to me about something, I'll say Sunday after church, Sunday after church. I don't want to have things on my mind. I want my mind to be clear. But that's because I'm a pastor. That's my pastor. You need to know what works for your husband, your wife, your boyfriend, your girlfriend. You need to know. Some of you have parents and you need to know what works for your parents. One of our pastors was saying earlier on, it says, 
if I need something serious to take for my wife and I want her to pay attention, he said, I take her for a dinner. He said, when I take my wife for a dinner, my wife knows that there's something important I want to say. So when I say it, she knows it. Praise God. I said, praise God. Pastor Toyin, how do you collect something from your husband? Yeah. How do you collect something from your husband? Thank you, Pastor B, for the opportunity. Yes, it's on, it's on. <laughs> okay, so um, I make sure I prepare his food very well. Huh. And when I'm going to serve it, oh, it will be like a five-star restaurant. You know, his favorite protein, everything will be in, you know, hefty portions. And so as he's eating, I begin to compliment him. You know, not everybody can be a father, but not all... You know, not all fathers are your, your daddies. Thank you for being responsible. You know, thank you for being present. You know, you, um, a lot of people go to work and they don't catch anything. But you go, you work, and you are excellent at it. Mm. You know, so every... You know, I compliment the way he looks. How can someone just be younging, not aging? You know, you... <laughs> Even me, I want to spray <laughs> I blessed the day I met you. You know, God, I know that God ordered your steps to me. It was not a miss, it was a hit. You know, so, um, <laughs> so after, after talking, the next thing is he says, so what do you want? I said, I don't want anything, but because you asked, you know. But, you know, I just wanted to tell you that, um, you know, I just need this, uh, X, Y, Z, this amount of money, is that all? You know, and I don't know, you can still add to it too. <laughs> and you know, so after that is said, a uh, few minutes later, sir, just five minutes later, I just hear something, something huge. Huge. Very huge. Just Ouch. hit me. That, On the phone. That, that, that evening. You know, when that happens again, I call all my children. Can you, can you just appreciate this man? This your father is. You know, as soon as the children are also appreciating, I saw me, another thing just hits me. Go! <laughs> Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. You must know what works. One person is dinner. Okay, let's take... Where, where's... Sister Zakiki, yes, when you want something from your own husband, what, what, what do you do? Um. <laughs> For my husband, he doesn't like, he says um, raps. All this, you are the best man, you are, mm. Just go straight to the point. What do you want? <laughs> Just say, honey, show, show, uh, honey, show, show, oh, my horn, my, mm, mm, mm. what is it? Just tell me. I said, but just wait. And I said, how much? How much? <laughs> Praise God. So the question is, which, which is a good, which is the perfect method? None. It depends on who you're married to. None. Praise God. And that's why you need to take time and study your partner. And know their trigger. That you know, that there are things that trigger your partners. There are things that mumulize mumula your partner. Praise God. I said, praise God. I said, praise God. I said, praise God. Why you want to ask for the other one in the other room? What, what do you do? Yeah. Are you looking back again? What do I do? Yeah. I, I try to make sure I'm extra nice. What? Um, yeah. I pay attention. <laughs> you what? I pay attention. I make sure I'm extra nice. Yeah, extra. How do you extra nice? Whatever needs to be done around the house, I make sure I help out. You help uh, out? So yeah. you're in the kitchen, she's there, she'll be like, honey, what do you want to cut? Let me cut exactly. for you. Exactly. 
and I, you know, just physical contact, slight touches here and there. Uh, oh, and, uh, okay, you start tapping currents here and there. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so as you as she's eating potato, you just tap the, uh, yeah. <laughs> just tap something. <laughs> what do you want? Is it? Why should what do you want? You say nothing. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty much. Praise God. <laughs> And some other people, they don't have to do that. Some other women, if you send a lot, they're ready. <laughs> I say, honey, don't worry. I, I'll see you a lot. Now, let's go. Let's, <laughs> let's go. Let's go. Let's go. No worry about Praise God. Go to the back. Give Tsunami what will they, yeah. Give, go to the back, yeah. Because the way they've been talking since here and in church, talking as I'm discussing their discussing our messages, you know, yeah. Praise God. You need to hurry. Yes, yeah, no, no, no. They, they, open that, raise up your hand so they can see your wife. Yeah. Exactly. So give it to your wife. I don't want to hear from your wife. So, yeah. When you want something from your husband, what happens? I ask, I ask nicely. What? I ask nicely. You, I guess. Tell us how you ask nicely. Let me just say, the first lady that spoke... Um, no, don't leave the first lady. Saying. That's not your husband. <laughs> we are feeling about your husband. Say your own. I mean, I, I Hold the microphone closer to him as I can hear you properly. Yeah. When I want something, what do I do? Yeah, I, yeah. I, I ask him very nicely, you know. Give us an example. We are, let, let's learn from your experience. Oh, God. Um, babe, you know I don't want to stress you. The last thing I want to do is to add any pressure, but I would really appreciate it if you, whatever. <laughs> mm. I don't want to stress you. I don't I want, want to. to yes. So normally, Obina, but this time around, the babe will be there. Wow. Wow. Praise God. Hallelujah. Anyone that has a different method that we can learn from this morning? Huh? <laughs> Who? Okay, they say the music director has a method. Praise God. Let me give you the oddest method I've heard when it comes to sex. One brother in this church told me, real life story, real life story, not making it up. I'm not, I'm not exaggerating one bit. He said, Pastor, what turns on my wife is prayer. He said, if I just finish praying one hour now, he said, my, bed will be, my wife will be on the bed. She's thinking about it. He said, I don't have to talk anything. He said, straight. He said, but outside that, I will rap, I will talk, I will rap, I will talk. The key thing is knowing what works for what? Your partner. And for you to know, you must study your partner. You're not hoping that I will do this, like this, what with my dad, my mom, my ex-boyfriend. Your ex-boyfriend is not your, your husband. Look for what works for what? Your partner. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Number five, and this is where I will stop. Identify and avoid communication breakers. There are things that break communication. Number one, tone. Tone. Number two, personality. There are some personalities, some people are what I call verbal assassins. Verbal what? Assassins. Who is a verbal assassin? They are people that they are mean, belittling, critical, fault-fighting, sarcastic, disrespectful, offensive, cynical, sharp-toned, harsh, nagging, judgmental, disrespectful, always on the defensive, ready to fight, who challenges their perspective or worldview. They possess a fervor for debating. They don't believe you are always right, but they don't believe you are, all, they don't believe they are always right, but they don't believe that you are right also. You know, some people possess favor for arguments. I say, once you say yes, automatically you say no. And some of you, the reason, and I'm saying so because sometimes you took it from your parents. 
You are not just a very agreeable person. You are not just a very agreeable person. You're, you, are, you love to be deviant. For example, you say, um, what do you call it? Um, today's a good day. What's good about today? Why are you like that? What's good about today? You just love to be on the side that is against something. Praise God. I said, praise God. I said, praise God. Be careful of being defensive. It can ruin communication. It's difficult to talk to someone that's always defensive. Hallelujah. Have you learned something today? As we learn all of these things, can we take one minute, look at the things you wrote, and on a scale of 1 to 10, give yourself a mark so that you can know what to work on. Everybody, let's do a review. Give yourself a mark. Sister Jennifer, mark him. If your partner is there, mark each other there. Give yourself a mark. So you can know what to work on. What are you going to work on? Because this is a practical teaching. It's not a teaching like, oh, hallelujah. No, no, no. It's something you're going to work on. Single people, give yourself a mark. And single people, you have all your life now to prepare, to change before the person comes. So if you're a verbal assassin, you know, you know verbal assassins, they call them, some of them are called narcissists. Praise God. Amen. Were you blessed this morning? Let's stand up and pray. Let's stand up and pray. Hallelujah. Let's stand up and what? Pray. This is a prayer. Lord, grant me the grace to do what I've heard. Grant me what? The grace to do what let's go ahead and pray everybody let's go ahead and pray grant me the grace to do what i have all of you that are married help me help grant me the grace to be a better communicator in my marriage all of you this is why i need to make adjustments oh god grant me with grace to make adjustment give me the discipline to make the adjustment let's go ahead and pray everybody let's go ahead and pray grant me the grace to do what i've heard heavenly father we want to thank you for your word today in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we receive grace to do what we have heard today. I pray you grant us the discipline, of God, to prioritize communication. I'm praying for every mind that is struggling here. Lord, you know where everyone is. Lord, bring peace to it. Lord, bring peace to it. I pray for single people, you will not marry wrong. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, you will not marry wrong. I pray for those all of you online, that the Lord will lead you into a blissful home in Jesus' name. Your marriage will not be a mistake. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord.